Mm. That's delicious. Yes. <laughs> hey, <laughs> thanks for coming to hang out with us. Thanks for having me. Pleasure is all mine. No, no it's not. Well, you're lying. So you're off to a bad start. So. <laughs> Pleasure <laughs> is half mine or it's third better. mine. It's better to say it like that rather than be like lie about hating it. Sure. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Hey, oh, I can be tr- I can be truthful. No. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. No, now I don't know what to expect. Yeah. It's like, I'm kidding. Which, I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> it's usually us making the guests feel awkward. I'm feeling awkward next. How time. the turntables, as How they the say. Turntables. Yeah. So yeah, like they said, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and blow a little bit of smoke up your butt. Congratulations Ooh. on an insanely great EP. What? Thank you. In the shit. Where did you guys come from all of a sudden with all this goodness? I don't it's know. Incredible. It's all in the name, isn't it? We I don't know. So. Yeah. We don't know. It's <laughs> thank you. I'm so glad you like it. It's um yeah, it's really an amalgamation of so many different things. I mean, we are like we've been we've been making music together since early high school. We're a high school band. Um so it's been uh, so one second, sorry. Uh, here we high go. school. Uh, do you remember like 50, 60 years ago yes. when you went to that? Yeah, that's what yes. high school was. Yeah, okay. Come oh, to okay. Yes. Yeah. So that's Johnny's very old. <laughs> the old jokes. Yeah. 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 Oh, I'm hearing a lot, a, a few of those going to crack out, right? The, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> he won't hear any of it because he's so um, old. He's here in school. Um, <laughs> you're a high school band. I'm so sorry. We're fucking you up here. We are a high school band. We're not as far out of high school as you are. <laughs> but no one, um, is. No one is. Clearly, clearly yeah, apparently. I don't know, maybe a little bit less. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we've been doing this for a long time. Um, not necessarily to this extent, by no means to this extent, you know. Um, this this release has definitely been a step up in so many ways. Like we've worked with a uh, like a way stronger team. Like we've had this incredible team behind us, an incredible like rallied like rally of support behind us, which has been phenomenal. And we feel so held by everyone around us. And that really does help pour into the music, which is, um, I mean, like, like I said, how it's all in the name. Um, the idea here was to explore um, that idea of like, ever since we began, we've kind of had this, this feedback coming back to us saying like, what are you guys? You know what I mean? Like, are you prog? Are you metalcore? Are you, are you uh, alt metal? I don't know, whatever it may be, like trying to sort of um, move us into a genre that works, but it has never really quite fit. So I think we tried to explore that a little bit. So your expression there of, of like, so much stuff like what is that what the hell it's it definitely rained true and um not not to say that was necessarily necessarily the intention to just shove as much as we can in it was more just how can we make an accessible product while also just saying all these things that are floating around in here you know what I mean with the songwriting process are you all on the same page or is it is it, as you said, like an amalgamation of ideas coming from, I really want to utilize this sound here or this element here, and it then turns it into one cohesive thing? Or are you all just like in sync, just on the same page that I'm not the Backstreet Boys type band just like <laughs> on the same page? I was going to make a joke too. I know, I could see you dumb right, cogs maybe bye, bye, bye. <laughs> um, Or is it something that, yeah, you are on the same page there building out that songwriting process? Yeah, I hear you. Um, It's a good question. And it's one that doesn't necessarily have a streamlined answer. You know what I mean? There are some... Feel free to ramble. Yeah, yeah. Well, there are some times where um, things are just clicking, you know, they're clicking into place. Um, We're definitely all on the same page. But honestly, most of the time, it's more of the former, like where we all really do have these different sounds and styles and inspirations. And what we feel works is is very different um, from each other. I mean, we all kind of represent almost a little bit of a different thing um, in the band. I like like that, we all yeah. have like, a, yeah, like for example, the metalcore influence you're hearing, it's like all Brandon. So this the song Safety, and whenever you hear something that sounds a little bit more of your modern metalcore, Alpha Wolf, Spirit Box style you know in terms of riffs and stuff that's all Brandon our guitarist um he definitely is more aligned in that style of music um everything like not necessarily everything but a lot of the weirdness and the proggy what the am I allowed to swear like yeah 
the fuck, probably yeah. what the fuck moments, thank you, uh, are a lot of that is attributed to Miles, our bassist. Um, he definitely has that. We is uh, the only, well, one of the only members of our band who is like sort of classically trained. So, you know, that's such oh, a cool, cool thing. I, right? was, I was actually going to ask about that because you guys have that sort of, I mean, not to say that you sound like Dillinger or Periphery or Ginger, but mm. you've got that style about the way that the riffs and the time signatures and the progs all, you can't just be a kid who listens to these bands and just picks it up. You need to, you need to have your chops. To oh, do that. yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, yeah, like that's definitely not to say that we don't have like concrete influences, like bands that we not necessarily are trying to sound like, but definitely sort of soak into the music that we create. Um, like the ones that you said, 100%, um, also System of a Down, a little bit of that, that's a huge inspiration mm. for me, particularly as a vocal writer. Um, I've always loved System stuff. Um, I was going to say, what do you bring, what is your thing that you feel you bring to the, to the band? That's such a good question. And honestly, I'm still trying to figure that out. I think the hardest part is analyzing yourself. Um, yeah, 100%. And it's funny, in a roundabout way, that works so well with everything that pours into the lyrical content and just the themes of this EP is trying to understand your, myself, um, you know, because I was the one who write the, wrote the lyrics. Look, I mean, in a concrete sense, I contribute, like, like all the vocal is me, at least, especially on this EP, I really took to my own on this one. Um, in the past, I've had a little bit of an experience um, sort of like bouncing back and forth a little bit with Miles, like we've done a little bit of collaboration on the vocals, but I think that um, things really started flowing from, because Mr. Magic, which was a standalone single before this one, that was my first sort of venture into really like kind of holding the reins for myself and, cool. um, Every, I think that you can tie almost every song of ours to like the origins of, of one individual person. Um, like, you know, like that, that's, that's Mon's song or that's Brandon's song, you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, okay. it's their baby, you know, they, they sort of brought it to life. I mean, when you're talking in the context of this EP, second nature is, is my baby, you know? Um, but in saying that, um, yeah, like, I think that my contribution is a lot more, I think grounding it in personal experiences, I suppose you could say. Look, because the guys definitely, um, they form these incredibly intricate instrumentals, um, which is so fantastic. But I think that I might be one of the things that sort of kind of kind of contextualizes it a little bit, maybe goes, okay, this is a bit much, let's bring it. Let, let, let's make it, it in, boys. Yeah. You know, like yeah. I don't know, maybe I'm more of the accessible mind whereas the other ones are sort of a little bit more all over the place a little bit um super hyper creative you know um and and sometimes those ideas go head to head you know what I mean sometimes you've got me being like this doesn't sound accessible enough and you've got Miles being like why does it have to sound accessible why can't yeah. we just blah 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 and back and forth back and forth but then eventually we we find a common ground and I think that that seems to be resonating with people so that's cool <laughs> Is it? I was actually going to ask that because with with styles like prog, um, and you know, like if you've got such a melodic, nice vocal, do you often find it hard to to pull it back to a more sort of accessible way, especially with like the way that you have to deliver the vocals to basically go along with these super complex melodies? How how do you find that? Absolutely. Like when you said, do you find it hard? Do you find it difficult? I absolutely do. And I think that that's one of my bigger struggles with being in a band like this, I suppose. Well, it's all that I've ever known. So it's not that I know how to write a pop song more than I know how to write this type of music. It's more just that it, it, I think this genre always comes with its own inherent struggles for a clean singer, especially, you know, someone who um, doesn't have screams in their toolbox I suppose you could say um in their in their repertoire um and that's not to say that I feel like I'm lacking in that skill like because if I if I wanted to learn I feel like I could put my mind to it and um and I might do that in the future I never say never but um I think one of the sort of uh obstacles in writing this type of music is trying to make it trying to make your vocal fit 
or, or just at least trying to have instrumentals and vocals on a similar wavelength, you know what I mean? Um, without needing to, you know, oh, we need screams here. It's just too heavy, yeah. we need screams here. But I think that one of the cool parts is it just kind of exercises your creative muscle, you know what I mean? Like, you don't have to have this much in your skill set to be able to make a diverse song. You just need to know how to work with this much, if, that's, yeah, 100%. if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think I'm learning that a lot more, um, especially through this, this EP. Um, you know, I've got a little bit of the harsher vocals. I, I might use rap in a section where you would think a scream would go or um, this, that, and the other, like just kind of ways to make it fit. Um, and, and still, like even in the music that we're writing now, like beyond the EP, I'm, it's one of my biggest struggles is trying to assimilate with them, with their brains, my voice with their brains and their instrumentals. But we always, we, we figure it out. And I think that we both, we sort of, the instrument section and the vocal section, they kind of balance each other out because I might have sort of a little bit more accessible, whereas they might have a little bit more techie and a little bit too much of either thing is, is bad. So you want to kind yeah. of balance it out. You know what I mean? When it came to the song you guys released with Sean from Make Them Suffer, was that a song that was written and you realised you needed heavy vocals or was it something, was that a, like a collaborative effort? Because um, as you said, you don't have that necessarily in your repertoire arsenal, if you will. Yeah. Um, Johnny likes arsenal. Um, is, was that a process of being like, we want this song needs something heavy, let's go get someone in for it? Or was that something that you wanted to write a song with him? I think it was a little bit of both, but more so the former. Like, I, it was a very organic process, actually. As we were writing the song, I think fairly early in, we started realising, okay, this one's like a metal for track. This one feels like, it doesn't necessarily feel like it's lacking something, but it just could be boosted with something. And um, the idea of a feature is always, um, has been very exciting to us for a while. And um, once we sort of planted the seed of like, I don't know, we're about 75% of the way through writing the song and we're like, yeah, this song could definitely use a feature. That's when we started almost writing with that in mind. So yeah. um, as the song came to be and as we did a bit of pre-pro on it and stuff like that, um, also because I knew that I didn't want to write a feature that was kind of just like dragged and dropped into a verse, you know what I yeah. mean? Um, yeah. I, so I consciously, because the vocals is one of the last ingredients that is is whipped up in in the uh, the creative process for us. Um, I tried to make sure that I'm weaving this this so called feature, this this hypothetical feature, their parts through the song. Cool. And then if all else failed, it could be something that I could then transform into. Come my back to yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. So and then from there, like once we had again, once we had finished the song, we. Um, uh, it, it all fell into place really, really well. Sean was a really great choice for it. Like he was pretty much a no brainer. I mean, being somewhat close to home in an Australian music scene sense. Um, obviously Josh, our manager, like also manager, like our management team, ODM, they manage, make them suffer as well. Yeah. So like pretty tight knit in that way. And it just kind of bounced back and forth really well. And he nailed, like I sent him over a demo that had my voice doing his parts. And I was like, don't do it like this, but like, <laughs> like, sorry, it sounds shit, but please like interpret this however you can. And then it, yeah, it ended up sounding really cool. So. How do you organic. translate that live? Again, another great question. Um, we, well, so far, the only time that we've played it live has been on the Monolith tour, which we just wrapped up this weekend. Um, and we had four dates to fill, four, four dates. Yep. Um, and because this was the premiere of the song, like, um, the first date of Monolith was actually the date, like, like two days after safety had dropped or something like that. Okay. We wanted to make sure that we were doing something a bit more exciting than just say me singing the part in my own way or whatever. So we actually got a new feature in every city. Um, sort of, oh, oh, nice. yeah, it was being really cool. So we had, um, Dylan from Deadlights in Brisbane. He sure. killed it. Then we had, um... Jono from Bloom, Jono Hawkey. Cool. Then we had, I'm going like this, like Brisbane, Sydney. Yeah, of course, work your way down the coast. Um, then Melbourne, we had Mikey from The Gloom in the Corner. Um, killed it as well. And then over in Perth, while we did have, like it, 
obviously it would have been a no-brainer to get Sean, right? We did have plans to do that with Sean, but unfortunately he became unavailable. So um, we got Tom from Patient 67 and he still killed it. So awesome. I think it was one of those little novelty things to add to our set that kind of made it a bit more exciting, a bit more fun. Um, but from here on, we're yet to sort of figure out exactly what Just we're doing. Just keep doing that. Keep getting features. That's well, if you, if you ever play on, on the coast... Nathan has never screamed before, but he'll give it a go. I will be Brilliant. terrible at it for you. Yeah, <laughs> it sounds like people are getting excited to jump up for safety, which is pretty cool. So maybe we could keep doing this. I uh, would yeah. not, absolutely not be opposed. Just do I like feel a like it would also give you a different experience every show. Like it would keep it so fun and exciting for you guys. Yeah. Going through and look, obviously you're, like, you're playing the same songs on repeat. It'd be a great way of keeping it fresh and exciting for you it has been really cool and i think it's actually one of my only my first times really um sharing the stage with another vocalist as well so it's really cool to have that little like chemistry Moment. and stuff and a bit of a back and forth especially because the part is quite woven together yeah, for sure my yeah. voice and stuff. so i think it's it's awesome i would absolutely be down for something like that we did talk about that when we checked out the song on the channel we were saying oh, i'm really interested to see how this works the dynamic because one of the things that we love when we see a guest feature is exactly that when when it's not just and do your one line and then you're off it really is woven in and i think yeah. you guys did that so really well but was interested to hear how you do it live so that's yes. it yes yes thank you well um yeah I, I personally like wouldn't i wouldn't have it any other way in terms of how the part turned out like in terms of it just kind of feels like sean's part of the band for that song and it just yeah. feels so natural and i just love that and i think that that sort of has given us good inspiration for the future as well you know for further collaborations later on down the track we'll definitely stick with that type of formula I think. Yeah. yeah for sure now you mentioned uh bloom just before so the mm -hmm. first time i had ever heard of you guys you were supporting thornhill and bloom and you played on the central coast That's and it. we walked in and you guys played and i was just watching you guys and i'm like who where the fuck these kids look like they're 16 how can they play this good it's just in your defense everyone looks 16 to johnny because he's so old we are definitely babies in, apparently in in, in old the are industry you? at the moment uh 23 yeah yeah 23. young guns yeah, yeah young guns. We're, we're, I, like i don't know People are getting older, I guess. Like we, I don't know. We we know how that time. happens in time. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm trying to put my finger on it. It is such a strange thing, the passage of time. But I know, I, I don't, I do, I, I don't know, like especially playing shows like Monolith um, where everyone is a bit more at the veteran status. Yeah. You kind of feel like a baby on that lineup, but it's I great. It's so yeah. cool. Like everyone looks after you more. It's, it's awesome. I, I'm not mad about it. You kind Maybe of get taken under the wings. If I, if I was 18, I'd probably be like stomping my feet, being like, I'm not a baby, don't baby me. But I'm, <laughs> I, I don't have a problem anymore. I'm like, please, like, let me be young. I'm just a baby. <laughs> also, oh, hold on to it while you can, trust me. <laughs> you mentioned the coast. You know, I'm, you know, I live on the coast, right? What? The central coast? Yeah. You do yeah. not. I'm here right now. Mm -hmm. why, why are you not in the room with us? Why are you yeah, in the studio? I, know, I just Wait, didn't could... realize you guys were on the coast. That's it. Janine, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> no, please don't say that. No, we'd never go to Janine. We we go to an angel. No, we would not be where we are without Janine. So shout well, out. Well, yeah, but that's probably our bad for not doing our homework ahead of time. Ah, oh, have you always lived on the coast? Yep. What we school did you go band. to? Except now we're more Sydney because half our band lives in Sydney. Of course, of course, yeah. of course. But born and raised, baby. What, can I ask what school did you go to? Gosford. I went to Gosford. You're kidding. Yeah. What? I'm a fair bit older, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. I had a 10 year head start on you, but wow. Yeah. That's insane. And Johnny was, um, I'm not going to do another old joke. <laughs> Surely you had Miss Partridge in the music yep. department. Yep. Yep. Good yep. old Miss P. Been there for a long time. This is so yeah. random. Yeah, <laughs> we're bad at our jobs, man. We need to get better at this. <laughs> Well, hey, at least like potentially our first like acoustic performance in the studio could be these guys. That would oh, be cool. yeah. That would be cool. Hells hey, yeah, I'd be down for that. that. Hey, Ooh. talk to us about touring. What's coming up for you guys? Can you announce anything? Has anything been announced? What are you excited about right now? There are a few things that have been announced so far. Um, just one-off dates. So for one, we've got a very exciting one in Sydney. Um, that is Crowbar's 10th birthday. 
Oh, and wow. that's with North Lane and Wind Waker. So yeah, that'll cool. be a hell of a time. Insane. I would say go get tickets, but it's sold out. So we're we're gonna be there. As well. We're lucky. But the other thing, people watching this can just deal with that. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll um, see you and then. the other the other one we've announced so far is down in Melbourne. That's in the same week. Um, that will be um for what we did on the weekend. They're running a Beyond Blue fundraiser show. They've, oh, they've cool. had a few of them in the past, and they've just gone off. That's at Stay Gold with. Uh, Saviour, Tapestry, and Alira. So that should Hell be yeah. cool. Um, and apart from that, we do have more in the works, but it's just unannounced so far. Um, it has been pretty tricky to navigate touring at the moment. Um, like, I'm not sure how many people you've spoken to about it, but it has been quite difficult to get things locked in and yeah. the, the logistics side of things. But um, we definitely are working on it and like we've got plenty on the cards. So stay oh. tuned, I guess. We are with bated breath, very excited. Yes, you've done a yes. few, you've done a few festival shows in the last year. Would you rather only play festival shows or only play solo shows? Festivals, hundred percent. That's a real quick answer. Why? I when you say solo shows, do you sort of yeah you Head, sort of headliners? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Headliner. Festivals, like <laughs> almost. <laughs> there's, there's a half question in there. <laughs> no, 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 definitely festivals um it is just so fun like you and, and they're always so well organized at least the ones that we've played uh, have been so I don't know when you're playing the the like solo headliners and the like the support shows and stuff like that while they are incredible it's a lot more there's a lot more DIY factor to it yeah whereas festival and that's great you know you learn a lot along the way but it, it's still a, it's a bit of like it's a bit exhausting as I'm sure you can understand. Um, yep. But when it comes to festivals, at least in our experience so far, and we've played a couple of dates so far, we played the full tilt. We played, we've played all of monolith now. Um, yeah. Everyone it's, you, you're treated like royalty. You've got a whole artist liaison team there. Um, you've got, crew already designated um you don't need to bring your own crew i mean well you do you do need to bring your own crew but like stage stage yeah. hands and stuff like that they'll all be around um it's such a welcoming environment and festivals just have that they, they just hit different you know what i mean like everyone in the crowd has a bit of a more um it feels like more like more of an event i guess and this is mainly just in our experience i don't think we've played the kind of high caliber um non-festival tours yet in a sense yeah. to, to really understand the the best of that yeah um, we did go on tour with Caligula's Horse a bit earlier in this year which was fantastic great crowds great response but at the same time I think in comparison um yeah it just feels a lot more um momentous I guess at the festivals and I that feeling is just infectious so yeah I think I would have to say that right now we were lucky enough to catch you at Full Tilt in Brisbane and we're saying how cool it was to see how many people were there because you guys opened for the yeah. very first show of the day. Like you guys had a great crowd just instantly there watching. Like I think that's a really cool thing that's happening in the music scene right now is people want to get as much of it as they can. So they're coming out to watch everyone with real open arms, which I think is a Absolutely. really cool thing. Yes, yes, 100%. And we've noticed that on Monolith too, you know, like we sort of graduated from year seven to year eight from Full Tilt to Monolith, you know, we were in, we were the first band and then we were the second band on this one. So, But, you know, still early in the lineup and yeah, um, yeah even the first band, Yomi Ship, they were getting some fantastic like response. People were really streaming in. Um, and by the time we got on stage, yeah, we, we had a really decent crowd. So we were so happy with that. And yeah, I think it's just, I think it speaks to the culture at the moment that yeah. you know, people have missed out on things for so long. So it's really time yeah, to sure. embrace it. Yeah. Do you think that the time off like over COVID uh, maybe helped you guys get a little bit more exposure? I mean, obviously you hadn't released the new EP yet. Um, and when was the last album? 2018? Was that yeah yeah late 2018 yeah. that's it so it was a little while in the making before we um we released a new one um i i definitely wouldn't say that the pandemic hurt us at least not in a in a from the public eye um like for the band we we actually released um yeah that single mr magic on um like pretty early covid days i think it was like the may of 2020 yeah may 2020 um 
And with that, that actually led to some really cool things for us. We um, announced our signing with Destroy All Lines for um, booking agency. Um, that's actually the single that got us in touch with Chris and Josh for management. Um, and then it just like unfolded from there. Um, and then just in terms of that, we kind of just tried to be as creative as possible. And um, I mean, look, on a personal sense, it definitely damaged us, you know, um, we, we all took a blow to our creativity. Um, at least I definitely did speaking from my own experience. Um, but on a, yeah, in the public eye, I think um, we, we were okay. I think we came out standing and we came out pretty strong because then by the time COVID was starting to slowly rear its head, um, we had Bear of Bad News to release. And yeah. um, that, that went really well. So I think that we kind of, yeah, came out the other side pretty safely, but um, we got, we honestly really got lucky. Like I, it could have, it could have happened. Like, like we could have been no one out the other side. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It was really um, unpredictable. And we just really grateful that people still wanted to pay attention at the end of the day. We came out swinging with someone very <laughs> strong at the end of it. So I think that really helps. Thank you. Hey, we love to ask some would you rathers to, to keep things fun and light. Please. Now, we both went to a nerd school, so I'm going to start off with a nerdy one. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Would you rather Dumbledore or Gandalf? Dumbledore. My girl. Damn it. Damn it. Why? I'm just more of a Harry Potter gal. Um, yeah. I got that I vibe. I really that, got into Lord of the Rings. Oh, you know what? You should watch the show. You still haven't watched it. You yeah. still haven't watched it yet. No. Uh, you should watch the new thing on Prime. It's really cool. Yeah, everyone's saying it's really good. Maybe I should. Um, I've tried so many times. And I, it's like, not not this show, but I've tried The Lord of the Rings so many times. Just <laughs> So many people are mad at me about it, but... <laughs> I mean, jo Johnny just texted me on the table and said, I hate her. Now. Yeah, yeah. That's so, yeah, I, I don't blame yeah, coming you. Back. Okay, I'll accept yeah. that. I'll accept it. <laughs> hey, so let's continue with the nerd shit then. Yep. Uh, Marvel or Star Wars? Star and Wars. Star Wars. Oh, wow. That was quick. No, great. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, it's very what easy. Uh, who would you be in Star Wars? Who would I be? Yeah. Who would character. I want to be or who am I actually? Yeah, <laughs> both. Little Who can Little actually Jar Jar Binks? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't do that to myself. I don't know. Um... Oh, I'm not cool enough to be any of them. I'm hey, probably, you, you know what? I'm probably a C3PO, actually. I'm I'm a I'm yeah. definitely a worry wart in the best of times. That is oh, such yeah. a self-humble. No one's been like, I love C3PO. Yeah. She's just calling herself on it. <laughs> it's because everything you do is gold, baby. What am I supposed to say? Oh, I'm Leia. Mm. You can be whoever you want to be. Nah, I'm That's happy. It. I'm happy with C3PO. I think that that reflects. A lot. Do you speak me. any of the languages? No. Well, wow, you I wish I could. catch up. That's his thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm not. I can't even do him well. Like, what are we uh, talking? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everyone's been like, "I'm a Jedi." She's yeah, like, I'm yeah. a computer. I I want to wait for. Some hey, of they the know moment. things. When are we going to get someone that's going to be like, I just want to be a stormtrooper, you know? Oh, just yeah. I, the, the outfit. I'm stormtrooper, what? Like number 137. Yeah. I just want to sort of sit in the background, shoot at people, but never hit anyone. And then get shot myself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's not a good It's idea. a very thankless job, isn't it? Okay. You meet your idol. Wait, wait. Who's your idol? Do you have anyone you look up to more than anyone in the world? Oh. Oh, yeah. We don't fuck around here. Um, <laughs> look. I don't know if I would say like more than anyone in the world, but right, but right now I, I mean, and I have since I learned who she was, I absolutely adore Courtney LaPlante. Cool. I know that that's a basic answer. No, it's not at all. I, so she's, she's everyone's idol. I adore her. She's a sweetheart. We yes. love her. You meet her. Mm -hmm. You either have to vomit on her or she's going to vomit on you. Which do you pick? You're saying this to an emetophobe. <laughs> um, no, I would rather she vomit on me. Mm -hmm. I would probably thank her, to be honest. You know, like... <laughs> what a blessing! Thank you so much. <laughs> well, I'd allow it. Yeah, you know, it's fine. Enough. Cool. Okay. I don't think I'd ever live it down if it was the other way around. So. Yeah, that's so true. It's unless it's a cool story you can tell. 
mm. maybe when I'm 60. Mm. <laughs> I don't think I'd live it down until then, but yeah, true. Uh, yeah probably true. the other way around. All right. You have to listen to one of these songs once a day, every day for the rest of your life. Nickelback photograph okay. or Creed with arms wide open. <gasps> with arms wide open. Also, love that you did that. You're yeah, the second person to ever do that. How could you not? Well, Otherwise I would have said, look at this photograph. Yeah. Also very good. Weirdly, though, you did it quite well. The other person was Winston from Parkway, and he oh, built it, and very impressive. So, there's no way I did that better than him. You did. You gave it a yeah, Sorry, shot. Winston. I have to talk about something here because yeah. I was watching a TikTok today because oh. uh, TikTok algorithm has figured me out so oh, well. It's dangerous. It's deadly. It shows me everything I want to see. It shows me music. That's what I like. And today it was uh, what he, the singer from Creed, Stapp. Scott Stapp. Yep. Scott Stapp reacting to someone covering Creed. But the dude was so talented. He did like an acoustic version of um, My Sacrifice. Oh, okay. And But it was just Scott Stapp just staring down the camera, just mouthing the words along with him. <sighs> It was incredible. No way. I think I've seen that. I it saw was, someone shared that on Instagram. And I was like, oh my God. Like he was really into it. Really, but like smiling. He's and it's like just mouthing the words while this other dude did a beautiful rendition of his song. Have you and, seen the one about like that video going around about Creed? How I don't know what song it is because I don't like listen to Creed, but um, there's a song. You do every day and, for the rest of your life now. Now I do. Now I, I've made that choice. I have to, I've made my bed. I have to lie in it now. But um, there's the song and the lyrics, like you can't hear the lyrics. It just sounds oh, it's like- it's just noise, yeah. <laughs> That's though, yeah. you're, you're sounds- young. Mm-hmm. You didn't really get to be around for the grunge era. Uh, yeah. It's all vowels. I'm living vicariously through it now. Okay, go listen to Pearl Jam and realize that it's all just vowels. Yeah. It's there's Pearl no... Jam. It's not even Creed that I'm talking about. Oh, that is oh. what I'm talking about. Yeah, cool. That's right. It's Pearl uh, Jam that I'm talking about. I just yeah. realized someone's going to be listening to this and they're going to hear me humming because they're going to know exactly what I'm talking about because I think it went viral on TikTok and they're going to be like, these kids at the screen being like, yeah. that's not Creed. Hey, it's Jeremy. Lucky for you <laughs> that most of our followers aren't total dicks. So they'll probably just think it's funny. Uh, most Thank of them also you. probably don't listen to Pearl Jam. So you're all right. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. Uh, let's finish with divisive question. Oh, yeah, this is a hard one. This okay. is a hard one. I think it is. Watch, me, watch are... me answer in like 0.5 seconds. No. Yeah. Okay, totally. cool. So you are dry, warm, comfortable, about to step on stage supporting Spirit Box. You have to put on cold wet underwear for your set or cold wet socks what do you put on you're right this is a divisive one 0.5 seconds my ass <laughs> um socks and you know why because you're my girl e- because it's easier to get changed after the set into different socks than to strip down. That's a new answer. That is the very first time anyone's logicalized the post-show dressing situation. I can't get away from my brain. <laughs> it's, it's it works in wonderful ways. I like it. <laughs> um, hey, yeah, that I think, I mean, look, it would be hell because I hate wet feet, but it, it would it have to be the best answer. Better than wet butt. I know Nate said we're going to finish it there, but on that, I want to ask one thing then. Who would be, who do you think really is ideal band bucket list band to tour with would be oh look because oh. you guys have got so many different sort of system styles of and yeah system okay of maybe That'd be so great. P- probably this one would probably be totally out of reach but then there are more in reach answers the totally out of reach one would probably be system of a down i mm-hmm. feel like it would be such a good pairing and just come on it's system of a down hell sure. yeah um and then, yeah, like slightly more um, like accessible to us, like maybe like maybe count my lucky stars could happen in the future. Um, Spirit Box would be obviously incredible. I think that that would also be a really good pairing if, if I do say so myself. <laughs> um, and um, I mean, I feel like this isn't necessarily my personal bucket list, but I feel like people really want to, would really like to see us with Evanescence. Oh, because, okay. Like, I don't know. I, I don't even know if we're the best fit because there are so many incredible, like, 
genuinely symphonic metal bands and we're not quite there I, I think that there would be a lot of other bands who would really suit that card um more so potentially than there are but, maybe a few look, years ago but evanescence are great but I'm just going to throw this out there. I wouldn't want to be in Evanescence and come on after watching you guys because musically, you smoke the shit out of them. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry, oh, Evanescence. I... Amy Lee, if you're watching this, you're fantastic, but this band <laughs> kicks your ass. <laughs> I hope Amy Lee is watching this. Hi. Well, How I are you? Now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That would be incredible. Well, Mon, thank you so much for taking the time to hang out. Uh, sorry we didn't do our homework and actually do this in person. Oh, it's okay. We, next time we will. Hell's yeah, know. for sure. Hold you that one. And we cannot wait to see you on tour very, very soon and uh, to see what you guys got up with next. Thank you so much, guys. It's been so fun. Thank you Happy very much. Happy to have you. Hey, you're wonderful.